Good afternoon and welcome to another Q&A with another member of the cast today from Joseph and the amazing All-Star Concert. It is, it's Wednesday today, isn't it? Is it Wednesday? I think yeah, we've, we've all lost track, haven't we? Hope you're doing well. Hope you're staying safe and staying home during this lockdown. And we are here to entertain you all ready uh, for this massive Joseph event that's going to be happening very, very soon. Uh, here on this very platform, whether you are watching us on Facebook or Instagram, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, you've been in your, uh, been sending in your questions for Marlon. We'll put them to him very, very soon. Uh, tomorrow we have Jenna Lee James. If you want any questions, uh, putting forward to her, get in touch uh, through message on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, and we'll get them through to her tomorrow when we chat to her at two o'clock. Right today though, uh, we're going to be talking to the Pharaoh who played the Pharaoh uh, from two thousand three to two thousand and seven. Uh, it is Marlon Moore. I believe he's ready to chat to us. Marlon, are you there, buddy? Wonders of technology. Maybe not. Is he there? No? Maybe soon. Been an interesting week doing this, hasn't it? Uh, we had lots of technical <laughs> issues on Monday uh, with, uh, 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 with... Was it Rhea? Monday with Rhea. Um, and then... Darren Day, we got there in the end. He kept freezing, uh, but we uh, we got there. Okay, I believe we've got him audio only. I can't hear him. Marlon, are you there, buddy? I can see you, but I can't hear anything. Yeah. This is this is like we had on the other day when we uh, we could hear Rhea, but we couldn't see her. So uh, let's do through these comments that are going through right now. Julie, thank you for getting in touch. Hi, Jake. Uh, also a hi to Melanie, who believes she, he's the best pharaoh in Joseph. Um, Anna Marie, oh, he's there. Well, that's one step closer than what I can hear because I can't hear him in these. I can't. I can hear some It's not him. Um, so the minute the rest of the technical team get that all sorted, we'll get him on and get your questions to him. Um, got plenty of good ones here to go through. Looking forward to this. Uh, Sarah Wells says he's one of my faves, is Marlon. Well, he could be one of my faves if I manage to talk to him at some point. I believe you guys can hear him, uh, but I can't. So uh, this is testing my my true true professionalism here. Maybe. Cat uh, Ady, hi, love. Uh, I performed with Marlon a few times in the choir. He's lovely. Uh, I hope so. Uh, I believe he's just logging out and logging back into this app. See, technology is only good when it works, isn't it? Yeah, wonders. Uh, I've been using numerous different platforms to have quizzes with my family and stuff uh, and do TV presenting and then radio from home. So that's been uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so as I said tomorrow, Jenna uh, Lee James will be chatting to us tomorrow uh, on here at two o'clock. So if you've got any questions for Jenna, get them through. We've had some amazing questions for Rhea, for Andrew and for Darren. Uh, they were all amazing. So thank you very much. Uh, we couldn't you know, it's good to have questions from you. Plus, they don't know what's coming. They get really worried when we're about to ask questions. Um, so, yeah, it's interesting that we get to put them under pressure and find out. Uh, Julia Hinkin says he is the best. Yeah. Of course, we've got a bank holiday coming up this weekend as well. I'm looking forward to that. VE. Uh, we'll be chatting to Zoe Tyler uh, on Tuesday. Or Monday, and I think it's Tuesday or Monday. One of them, I'm sure we'll let you know here. Uh, Tuesday, it's Tuesday. There you go. See, magic words in my ears. Um, da -da -da. Jake, got your question? We'll put that forward. Uh, Marlon is a great guy and a good friend. Come on, Marlon, your fans are waiting. Yes, Marlon. Nobody wants to see this Yorkshire man asking questions and chatting. We want, we want to see you, buddy. Uh, so we're just waiting for the go ahead to get him on the screen. Uh, and we'll chat to him and put your questions to him. We've had, I said, some incredible questions uh, that have come through. Put them all under pressure. I know Andrew had a bit of a sweat to himself yesterday. Darren just cut perfectly fine. Uh, and, of course, uh, Rhea. We got there in the end. We heard about some exclusives from Rhea, didn't we? We heard that there could be a baked potato uh, with Matt Lucas uh, in the pipeline for her. And we talked to Darren Day yes, uh, on Tuesday Monday, uh, about... Um, his new line maybe as a hairdresser or, or, or as a daycare centre. Day, daycare. I like that. Uh, Joe Morgan, best bloke you'll ever meet. I'll be the judge of that when I actually get to chat to him. I can't wait for that. Uh, Louise, I'm also looking forward to hearing from Marlon. Uh, he's a great performer. I believe he is. And everybody uh, that is involved with this amazing concert, it's fantastic. So, I mean, there's a massive team. I don't think yeah. people realise 
uh, the extent of all the people getting together to bring this to you. Uh, especially, you know, there's me here in York, West Yorkshire, this and then there's people right. based in London and all over the country bringing it together. So thank you uh, to all of them. And remember, if you're enjoying these, the questions and we're uh, asking them and also the build up for the concert. Remember, you can donate. It is all for charity. Everyone's doing everything for free. Uh, and you could do that by justgiving.com forward slash fundraising forward slash Joseph Dream Concert. I believe we have Marlon right now. Buddy, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yay! How are you, my friend? Are you well? I'm not too bad, thank you. Yeah, not too bad. Uh, better now it's working, yeah. Yes, me too. I was starting to run out of things to say then, but uh, <laughs> thank you for saving me. Uh, how are you coping throughout this lockdown, Marlon? Are you getting there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I mean, the sun's shining today, so you can't go wrong when the weather's nice like that. Um, but you just you just have to uh, keep yourself busy, keep yourself positive, and um, it will all be over at some point. It will uh, we'll get back to the, to uh, to normal life, and um, we just have to appreciate all the people that are doing a lot to uh, to keep us safe and, and and keep the country going at the moment. Yeah, indeed, and of course. Whilst we're in lockdown, we're looking forward to this amazing Joseph event, uh, which yeah. you are very excited to be a part of, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, everybody's seen the, the, the cast list so far and everybody that's involved. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, I was on the show for, for, for a few years and there was quite a few different casts came and went through through that time. Um, and this is just, uh, you know, it's just fantastic. If we could get everybody that was that was ever involved, we'd have, you know, thousands of people and that would just be fantastic. But the cast that we've got is, yeah, absolutely spot on. It is a, a total dream cast. Yes, and all this week uh, we've been putting them under pressure and asking questions from your fans and followers of Joseph. So it is your turn today, Marlon. Are you ready? I am ready. Let's take a deep breath. Let's get into it. <laughs> Uh, Sarah Wells is first up. Uh, if there was one thing you could just one uh, you could do just one more time, what would it be in regards to Joseph? Oh, in regards to Joseph, I thought you meant in general. I was going to say if there's one you more, can answer thing, both one more if you time, want. come out of lockdown. Um, no, um, <laughs> uh, just one more thing, one more time. Um, to be honest, the, it, it's always the uh, the excitement of being told that you've you've you know you've got a, a job, you've got a show, you've got a gig, you've got um, um, so it's it's almost that that rush that buzz um, that you get from that that if anything that would be the just one more time that's what I would like that's what I'd appreciate um, because it's oh, yeah it's just an absolute thrill it's a thrill to to get that phone call from your agent or to get contacted from the office and say you know you've got it, it, got it. yeah it's it's just incredible it it, it means all the, the hard work has paid off. So yeah. Prior to getting that phone call that you spoke about, were you uh, a fan of Joseph? Had you watched it? Had you been a great follower of it? Um, I don't remember watching it when I was a kid. I don't remember being younger and watching it, but I'm sure I probably did. Um, I did go to see it. Um, I had done panto with a guy called James Head, who um, uh, went into Joseph and played Jacob, and uh, I went along to uh, to see him um, and watch the show. And um, it was at the New London at the time. And I just remember thinking, oh, my God, this is this is such a good fun show. Uh, and the, um, the, the there was a guy playing the, the Pharaoh, uh, probably the best Pharaoh I think that there's ever been, a guy called Trevor Jari. And um, he was incredible. He was in, in, in absolutely incredible. And I said, oh, I would love to play that part. Not ever really thinking that one day I would ever even get into the show, let alone play that part. I'd auditioned for a lot of musical theatre and nothing was really happening um, for a long time. And uh, yeah, Joseph was basically my 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 big break, my my first big break. So I was really, really chuffed. Yeah, really chuffed. A lot of people saying that Joseph was their springboard and after that, the rest is history and Joseph set yeah. the pace. Yeah. Uh, Julie Hinken, do you think you might be back at the Birmingham Hippodrome in the near future? Oh, yeah. Uh, not not necessarily in the near future, but hopefully hopefully um, uh, someday soon. Yeah, it's a, it's a great theatre. Um, Hippodrome is a great theatre. The Alex as well, just in, in Birmingham as well. Um, that's another great theatre. But yeah, the Hippodrome is, is fantastic. It, it's big um, and it's got a nice modern feel to it. Um, it's great for it's great for cast as well because it's got some fantastic dressing rooms and you can actually use the canteen upstairs backstage, um, which is for the Birmingham Royal Ballet. So that for a cast member, spot on. Absolutely. We will we will get into more backstage stories <laughs> later on with you, Marlon. I've uh, 
<laughs> little little birdie in my ear said you've got some good ones. Uh, Paula Odell, knowing what you know now, what uh, advice would you give your younger self just starting out? Oh, jeez. These are tough this week, Marlon. They've been, oh. they've been harsh, haven't they? Um, just, just literally to, um, just to stay positive, just to be as positive as possible. It's, um, it's a really, really tough industry. Anybody that, that goes into this business, goes into this industry, um, you, you have um, a, a lot of strength and you have to take a lot on the chin. Um, you basically set yourself up for rejection um, every time you go into the room of an audition, casting, self-tape, anything. Um, so it's very, very easy for let, to let that get to you and let that kind of really um, uh, hit, hit, you, hit you personally. And you basically just have to take it on the chin. Um, it's not personal. It's just there are a lot of people out there. Um, it's not exactly uh, easy to come across in the pinpoint way that they want in the room when you get in there. So I think I would just have to say to myself, yeah, just be as positive as possible and enjoy all of it because you never know when it's all going to be, um, you know, kind of over and done with or career over or quietens down. Um so yeah, so it's it's it's. I think I think stay positive and just enjoy every single second, every minute of it. Great advice, Cat Ada. Uh, have you ever not made a quick change? Um, I have. Yes, I, yeah. There's been a couple of times where quick changes have not happened. Um, I believe there's times where I've gone on stage in 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 the wrong shoes, um, which have definitely not looked right at all. Um, I, I, although I, I, I do have a little story about a quick change that I did make, which I was very, very chuffed with. We're intrigued um, to hear it, Marlon. It's over to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the, uh, the first year that I was in Joseph, I was the, um, the cover pharaoh. So I was one of the brothers and I was cover the pharaoh. And uh, I re remember very distinctly, we were in um, the Hexagon Theatre in Reading. And uh, the pharaoh at the time had gotten really, really ill, really ill during the show, actually, whilst the show was on. Oh. Um, so he'd come out and done the main number and um, he'd gone back into the dressing room and, and uh, to get changed to then come back out for after Canaan days and things. And he didn't reappear on stage and we weren't quite sure what happened. Thought maybe would, he'll just wait and then he'll just come off the reprise at the end. And we all sat there during the very, very tense, very quiet Joseph yeah. Jacob scene at the end. And I had the company manager in the wings shouting at me, Colin, you've got to come off stage, you've got to come off stage. And I had, there was, there was, four kids between me and the wings. Yeah. So at the moment, everybody stood up. I jumped into the wings and uh, and <laughs> ran round to the Pharaoh's dressing room to find that he'd actually been quite ill all over the floor of his dressing room. So the, the, the dressers were there saying, we don't know what to do. And he really is not, you know, well enough to go on stage. And he was, he looked yeah. really, really bad, bless him. So I had to uh, put the costume on because it was the only one that we had. There wasn't a spare one at the time. Um, so uh, they had to pretty much strip him and give me the costume. And I could hear getting my hair done and getting the last bits of costume put on, boots on. I could hear the start of the Pharaoh's reprise number. And the music was just... And I ran around the stage and walked, jumped up the stairs and walked on the stage to literally start singing the first two words of the song. Um, wow! As 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 it as as the uh, the song actually happened, and it was it all help from the the the, the sound guy, the, um, the the dressers and everything uh, to get me on. But that was probably the the the, the tightest of quick changes that I did. That's, that's <laughs> phenomenal. That's phenomenal. You've gone from just not knowing anything to being a hero, saving the show, so to speak. Uh, well, no, there's loads of people involved in that. So yeah, but yeah, it was great. It was great. Oh, brilliant, Carly Bruton. What is your favourite character that you've ever played? Oh, that's They're not going easy. They're not going that's easy. Really, that's really tough. Um, they all mean a lot to me because uh, in Starlight, I played a, a, a very um, a very different role to what I'm used to playing, um, which was called Dustin. So he was the um, the fat train. Um, which um, perfect for um, during lockdown right now because of eating a lot. And um, <laughs> but, uh, I also covered Greaseball, um, and they were both very, very different parts, but great parts to play. 
Um, I covered um, a, a really good part in 9 to 5, which is the lead, which is a great part. But I have to say, I think it would still be uh, The Pharaoh because it was my first big show. It was my first big part. Um, and, it, it, and it's really, really kind of close to my heart. It's a, it's, a, it's a show and a part that's really close to my heart. I'm a massive Elvis fan. So um, to be able to play a character that has um, Elvis qualities or Elvis yeah. um, uh, persona, uh, yeah, that was that was kind of dream. I mean, I got a costume made for me when I took over as the Pharaoh, um, and it was you walk around in that costume and you just go, oh, I don't care if it's stretched. <laughs> yeah, I, I love it. It looks fantastic. So yeah, so really, really chuffed. With it. Yeah, that's that's probably the um, yeah the the, the the one that that is closest to my heart. Yeah, brilliant. Donna Butler, uh, is there any parts in a musical that you would love to have played? but haven't had the chance to? Yes. There's there's two that I'd, I'd love to. I think one of them is slightly um, out of my grips now, but um, I, I always wanted to play Rum Tom Tugger in Cats, um, which, uh, yeah, I think uh, age, age range is, is slightly out there uh, now, but um, I would love to play Teen Angel in Greece. I, you know, I, you could keep your Danny, you could keep your Kanicki, Um Teenager in Greece, it would be yeah, my ideal. Any particular reason? Um, his song, Beauty School Dropout, it's just brilliant song. It's yeah, it's it's a, I, yeah, I just think it's a great, a great song. So that would be yeah, my good favorite. choice. Good choice. <laughs> uh, Melissa, what is your favorite touring venue? Uh, and what do you think is unique about your version of the Pharaoh? She's milked the question there with two in it. Ooh, um, Favorite touring venue. Uh, I love some of the um, the real old classic venues like Windsor Theatre, uh, Theatre Royal, um, places like that that are really, really kind of like quite old and really kind of decorative and still have a nice old feel to them. Um, but then I like big venues like uh, Liverpool Empire or um, Edinburgh Playhouse, uh, places like that. I think probably probably Windsor Theatre. Is probably my favourite because I've I've done Pantos there and I've done um, uh, Joseph there and Nine to Five there. So I think that's probably uh, my favourite venue. I have to give a massive shout out to um, the Starlight Halle in uh, Germany, in Borkum in Germany, because that theatre was actually built for that show. Wow! So um, it's in the Guinness Book of Records for having one show doing the, the most amount of performances in one place. Um, and that is that is just kitted out for that show. So it's it's that's a great theatre to have been um, uh, had the privilege to be able to perform in. So yeah, but I think UK wise, I think it's going to have to be Windsor Theatre. Yeah, I mean, when you go into theatres like you know the, the Windsor one, you, you're stepping into history, aren't you? Especially yeah. when you're on that stage uh, and you've you know the people that perform there. I know a lot of uh, theatres backstage have the posters who used to perform myself uh, many times at the North Pier in Blackpool and you walk on and there's been Markham and Wise and, yeah. you know, and you, and you just think this is incredible. I'm, I'm stood in the same place as yeah. these people would have stayed. You so. get to be a part of, of that history of that venue. Um, like you say, you, you, you see the posters backstage and you see some of the people that have performed in that venue and you just think, I, I've, I've got the privilege to also perform there as well. Um, and it, and it is, it's, it's incredible. The, uh, the Derngate theater in, um, Northampton, it used to, used to go through stage door and everybody had written on the wall and drawn on the wall. All the performers that had been there had signed it yeah. and drawn all over the wall. And it was just so amazing to see because it wasn't even pictures of people. It's actually people that had written on the wall. Yeah, absolutely right. Absolutely did, right. Did you get to add to that wall? Um, I, I don't think I did cause I felt a bit kind of these great names are on the wall and, um, little old me, uh, but sadly they did a, a bit of a refurb at the, at the Dern Gate and somebody painted over the wall. Oh. And I, I think it's been lost, unfortunately, which is a real, real shame. Um, I hope they've got photos of it, but yeah, I think the last time I went there, um, unfortunately it had been redecorated. At least you got to see it, which is more than people will now, I guess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Trevor Davies, uh, have you ever forgotten your lines whilst on stage? Yeah. And what would you do if this happened? Yes. Uh, not, I wouldn't say regularly, but yes, it does happen. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> no. um, but yes, it, it does happen. Um, I, do, I do remember 
if anybody from nine to five is watching, um, I do remember um, at the end of the show, I used to, uh, I played a part called um, uh, Mr. Tinsworthy. And uh, I came out uh, looking basically like Colonel Sanders from the KFC advert. And um, I had a, a white, white Stetson and big white beard and, and Tash and everything. And I came out and I, I had to do a line and I just completely forgot the line. And it's, a, it's, you know, it's the final scene of the show where the main character finally gets his comeuppance and his, his berating. And I just, partway through what I was saying, I just completely forgot to what, to, what my line was. So I, out of nowhere, I just went, <laughs> and I just carried on. And I still to this day have no idea where it came from, what it was all about. Um, everybody thought it was pretty hilarious and was laughing at me. Um, it kind of seemed to work, and I don't think the audience really got it, but obviously all the cast knew. Um, you just you just kind of have to keep going. You just kind of have to, to, to make yeah. it up. Um, sometimes that's the fun of, of, of live theatre. As long as you don't do it regularly, that's, that's the fun of live theatre. Yeah, otherwise you'll get a name for yourself doing that. <laughs> uh, Jake McGonagall, uh, could you sing uh, the song of the Pharaoh? I know we spoke earlier about this when you had to take over. I'm assuming you could because you had to. Um, yes. So uh, you, when you, when you are kind of, um, when you are covering or the understudy, yeah, you have to learn. Um, the song you have to learn uh, through the routine, the movement, everything like that. So yes, so when um, I had to go on stage, I was fully prepared. And this is what creative teams are, are, you know, kind of fantastic for is they make sure that everybody that is first cast and is going on to perform their parts, um, they're all set up and ready by opening night and everything. And then uh, even in rehearsal time before your opening night with that cast, um, all the understudies are going through their parts as well. Um, to make sure that if you have to go on stage, you get it right. A, because we don't want to look like idiots if we go on stage and we don't know what we're doing, but also because um, there are people out there that pay money to watch the show and it's not fair if you don't know what you're doing. So you you have to learn so that if you are thrown on last minute, you are still putting on a performance for all of those people that have paid to come and see it. Um, so that, yeah, you have to be, you, you have to be completely um, fair to them. Talking to the Pharaoh, um, when you played the Pharaoh for, for many years, uh, what made your version of the Pharaoh unique, do you think? Um, <clears throat> to, to be completely honest, I think everybody makes their Pharaoh unique. Um, you, you're given quite a lot of um, free reign on how, you, on how you interpret the character. You are given the basic character of what it is. So it is, um, you know, the, the king of Egypt, but he has an Elvis quality about him. If anything, maybe Elvis got those qualities from the king of Egypt, if it was all, you know, kind of um, uh, realistic. But um, you get given a lot of free reign as to what to do. And, you know, you are guided as to some movements that you could do and things yeah. like that. Um, but you don't want to be a carbon copy of Elvis. It just has to have an Elvis S quality. So I think everybody puts their own stamp on it. Um, I, like I said before, I was I'm an Elvis fan. Um, my dad was a Teddy boy, so I was subjected to a lot of uh, rock and roll music growing up, um, which you know it's, it's something I absolutely adore and love. Um, so it was it was quite easy for me to to pick the tone and the lilt of that kind of style out um, with that song, and and also put some movement to it. Um, so I, I used to kind of use some 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 real Elvis uh, moves um, for it, which yeah, which um, I think made it slightly different because I did a couple of a couple of um, movements that were a little bit different to what other people did. But every, everybody puts their own their own stamp on it, which is which is great because otherwise we would just be carbon copies, and then it would just get boring for you know the next yeah. the next year and the next audiences that come to see. Whilst we're on uh, the Pharaoh, somebody just said in my ear. Um, could you sing a clip, maybe, of the Pharaoh song whilst we're whilst we're on air? I'm just just what I'm going. See, without or you have to do your Elvis dancing. What are the other ones I'm going for? Well, I might knock a light out if I did some Elvis dancing. Um, yeah, I could do a little bit from the from the from the the, the song. Um, I won't do too much because uh, you have to wait and watch the concert. Yeah, just a tease of what we've got to look forward to. Um, <clears throat> Well, I was wandering along by the banks of the river when seven fat cows came out of the nun. Oh, there you go. 
Brilliant, Marlon. Right. Thank you very much. I think all the people that are watching this are excited for Joseph. I think they're excited for a little bit more now. Thank you to you, fella. <laughs> um, but still on the Pharaoh, what do you think of the new Pharaoh song, King of My Heart, from Anna Marie Cairns? Um, I've only heard it a couple of times. Uh, I never got a chance to, to sing um, that, that number to, or to sing that part of the song. Um, it's, it's got a really, really nice uh, Elvis quality to it. There's a really, really, the, when they, when they, kind of made that song when they uh, created that song they really did kind of uh, make sure that they put a real nice Elvis look to it it's very easy to add some word in and add a new song in but it to not really have um, too much of an actual you know um, style specific to you know to 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 that Elvis kind of character um, so yeah so I, I, I liked the the, um, the tone of it and the style of it when they put it in but yeah unfortunately I I, I, I never got to uh, never got to sing that part of it well, on the songs of Joseph, so many great songs. What would you say is your favourite song in Joseph? Again, from Anna. Uh, it's, it's definitely the song of the king. Um, it's, it's definitely the song of the king um, because it's just it's just a cool song. Uh, everything around it is just a cool song. Everything in the show is fantastic. You've got so many different styles from uh, French pastiche to um, your 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 hoedown, you know, your your hoedown kind of style and uh, calypso. There's so many lovely styles in there. But for me, obviously playing the Pharaoh as well, that's that was the best song. That was the you know the the fifties rock and roll Elvis song. Uh, closely second is the French pastiche though, Canaan Days. I think that's a really really lovely. Um, uh, lovely number a lovely song when i wasn't the pharaoh when i was the cover i actually did the um the partner work the apache dance in it so yeah so it's a, a yeah really really nice song now you're talking about elvis and obviously the impact that he has on the pharaoh do you think that when you were growing up and you were in a household where like you said the teddy boys and elvis was such a big thing do you think that helped you get the part of the pharaoh pushed you towards it yeah um it it definitely it definitely helped me with, with actually playing the role completely. Um, when I first went into Joseph, I didn't really think that I was going to, I wasn't actually cast as the cover. They didn't cast anybody as the cover at the time. And it was only um, the, the first week uh, we were actually on the show in Cheltenham that I kind of said, oh, if, that's part of, if that part's available, I'd love to play it. Hmm. Not really thinking that anybody was going to take me seriously. And, um, and, and, and they did. Uh, which was quite scary at the time. Um, but I found that it was a part that I was, was capable of singing because of the, because of the style of voice. Yeah. Um, and I do, I do feel that the, uh, the kind of music that I listened to growing up was, was definitely, definitely um, a massive part of that. Uh, I, when I play parts like Grease Ball, again, it, it's a very similar style um, kind of singing voice and style of voice character, obviously bank hair, you know, 50s rocker kind of character. So, yeah, it, it, I do find that that has been my forte in terms of musical theatre and going out there. I don't think I have a standard musical theatre voice, an empty voice. Um, I think I have a, a little bit more of a, a vibrato rock and rolly voice. Which is perfect for the, the Elvis, <laughs> I guess, as, we, as you saw in the song. Now, you, you've performed in many, uh, you know, theatrical productions. If you had to cho choose your favourite ever show on the West End, on Broadway, what, what would it be? Oh, um, not a show that I can see myself being in, but one of my favourite shows that I do really, really like is uh, Notre Dame de Paris. It, uh, it, the, the World Tour came to the Coliseum uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, last year, actually, sorry. And I saw the original in the Dominion Theatre years and years and years ago. And I just loved it. I loved the music. Uh, I loved everything about it. The, 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 the dancing, the stunt guys, um, going up on the bells and spinning. And, and oh, it was just absolutely incredible. So I think I think that's got to be one of my, my favourite shows, Um whether I would be suitable for a certain part in it, I'm not sure, because there's some quite high singing in some of that. Uh, but that, I think, is, is probably one of my favourite shows. I have, I have a lot of favourite shows, things like... It's hard to choose, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, there are, there are loads. Saturday Night Fever is another show that I loved. Um, uh, yeah, there's, there's too many, but I think Notre Dame de Paris is one that, that the music of that I just absolutely adore. Yeah. Now, we've been asking all the people this week that we've done Q&A with, so we can't miss you out of this. 
Joseph, technical or dream coat. Can you name the colours of the coat and in order? Uh, <laughs> now, so true. far, only one person's got it right. Oh. That was Andrew. Andrew yesterday. No pressure then. Um, okay, uh, it was red, yellow, green, brown, scarlet, black, ochre, peach, ruby, olive, violet, fawn, lilac, gold, chocolate, mauve, Cream, crimson, silver, rose, azure, lemon, russet, grey, purple, white, pink, orange, blue. Correct. <laughs> there we go, yeah. <laughs> I literally um, got yes in my ear and a thumbs up on the screen like that. There, so. <laughs> well done, Marlon, well done. Uh, now, Sean Warner, have you ever fallen on stage? If so, how do you recover and fit it into the scene? Um... Yes, I have fallen on set. You, you, you have to basically just make it look like um, you meant to. It was deliberate. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was deliberate. I, um, Starlight Express, you fall regularly, um, which when you're playing the fat train, it's easy to kind of go, oh, huh, it was deliberate. Yeah, it, it, it really was. Um, but uh, I, 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 we were in Derry actually on Joseph, and um, the director choreographer said to me. I want you to I want you to run onto stage. I don't want you to walk and do your cool thing. I want you to try running. I just want to see what it looks like. So I said, yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll give that a go. And I remember it was press night. It was opening night, press night. And I ran onto stage. Now I was pair, wearing a full pair of cowboy boots. Um, and they were sprayed white. They were a, a, a tanned brown color. They were sprayed white. And they had not long been sprayed white. So as I ran onto stage, I slipped. Of course. And I basically skidded on my knees across the stage, stood up and started the number. But where I'd managed to skid, my, my arms had flailed a little bit and everything. Um, but the review that came out afterwards said that I was um, a very acrobatic fairer because I, I backflipped onto my reprise. <laughs> And you styled it out perfectly by the sound I, of it. I, I don't know how somebody misconstrued me falling over to backflipping onto stage, but that was apparently what had happened. So I went with it. That's a talent and that's pure professionalism, Marlon, I can imagine. Especially since I can't backflip. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, now, uh, as we continue with the questions, um, we've been having loads coming through, but a lot of people want to know about your backstage stories. Now, we hit on one earlier in regards to the Pharaoh incident uh, yeah. that was ill and you had to jump in. I think that's quite a good one. That shows your, your professionalism and your technique and your star quality. But what would you, if you could have the funniest one, your funniest backstage story. Now, if you want to leave names out so we don't, you know, liable or upset them or slander them, then fair enough. But just um, give us a good juicy one, Marlon. It's a family show. So, um, yeah. <laughs> be careful with some of them. No. Um, I, 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 ones that I can think of that are suitable um, are, are things like in. I remember being in Panto and being on stage, and, and um, there were quite a few of us on stage. And um, yeah, I just remember it came out over the speakers this noise, this just this absolute weird noise that we were just not expecting because it was just a dialogue scene, and we suddenly realised that that somebody's mic hadn't been turned off and they were in the dressing room going to the toilet. And that sound was coming through the microphone. Wow. To which it very, very quickly after it was, it was uh, kind of came through was, was turned off and, um, and, and, and it, and it disappeared. Uh, but that left us on stage kind of, knowing exactly what it was and and, yeah. and and you know was it was quite difficult to carry on with the scene after that because it was um yeah it was quite it was quite a giggle um to hear I that can imagine so things this, things like that did the person ever live it down uh, uh they, they were of an older generation and i don't think they were really too worried i, I, <laughs> I feel it may have happened before because they were supposed to turn their mics off when they went back to backstage and things yeah. um and they yeah they they hadn't and I, like i said i think it happened before unfortunately when you've so. got to go you've got to go after <laughs> when you've got to yeah. go uh tracy thorpe have you ever played a prank on a fellow cast member on tour no no definitely not i'm i'm way too serious and professional 
for that. Yes, no, absolutely. Lots yeah, we're not of, buying that. We're not buying that. Yeah. Um, yes, lots of times. Lots of times. Um, especially if you're hidden and 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 they can't be you you can't be seen and they can. Um, Joseph was was quite easy to do that in a lot of different scenes. So there would be moments where the narrator would be standing singing and you'd be hidden behind a sheep. So if you just pinch the back of her leg or, um, or, or, or just kind of like tickled her ankle or something like that, it, it would, you, you can't just do it to anybody and it's not something because not everybody deals with it very well or wants that kind of thing. Um, and as long as it isn't shown to the audience to put anything off, um, but yeah, you can you can generally find things in nine to five. I um, I wasn't on for a certain scene. It was a big dance number, and um, pretty much all of the other cast were. Um, all of the other dancers were on stage, and there was a certain section where one of my good friends was dancing, and he had to face the wings and do a, a part of the routine. And I used to do different things in the wings just to either make him laugh or to. Um, you know, kind of just if it because it was a hard number, just to you know, kind of pick them up a little bit. Uh, my favourite was when um, I I brought an it was empty, but I brought a Domino's box into the wings, and as he turned to face me in the wings, I opened this Domino's box as if I was just about to eat something. And he was a massive Domino's fan, and he was he would he almost went red with with jealousy and um, uh, yeah annoyance at my my little break in the wings. Marlon, you you make you sound like a proper troublemaker. No, 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 not at all. Well, let's reverse the roles. What's the worst prank to happen to you? Um, and whilst you think of this, uh, Melanie Mansfield uh, says she has played loads on you on our comments below. Yes, yeah. Um, some people have... Um, I do seem to be a target. Um, I, 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 I feel it, it... Is it not more payback, do you think? Po possibly. <laughs> uh, but it's also because, you know, because... Uh, I, I I I can take a joke very well, so um, yeah, I don't mind it. But people have um, uh, people have put things in my shoes so that whilst I'm in the routine, I'm I'm you know either squelching on something with jelly babies or <laughs> uh, you know I, I go to put them on and there's something in there and I can't get it out. Oh. Um, I one one of my first professional jobs, probably the highlight of my career. I was uh, Daisy the cow in pantomime and um, somebody uh, put something on the actual inside of the shell of this cow. It was a glorious cow, actually. Um, the, but they actually managed to smear some kind of chilli cheese spread or something on the uh. end. And I had to spend the scene with that over my head, um, which was not the nicest. <laughs> I, I feel like you got it back worse. Like, obviously, these you were just nipping the back of these people's legs and promising them dominoes, and it wasn't actually dominoes, and you're there getting random things spread over yeah no i i am um, I'm, I'm i'm being slightly shy on on the things that i've done to other people um but um so i don't okay. know, I don't know <laughs> I, got it I was i was also very good at not corpsing too much on stage so i was quite good at holding it together so it was always a challenge to try and get me to laugh or try and get me to um to corpse on stage or to 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 break slightly um so yeah, so I think that was and that was always the biggest the biggest thing for people. Brilliant. Uh, now I've got to make sure I read this right because this could go wrong. Kat Aidy said she was a sheep, and he would pull her bobble out. Yeah, so that could have gone terribly wrong. That, but carry on. They had, um, uh, yeah, they like um, they'd have like a like a hair bobble um, on their hair, and uh, you you'd never pull it out. That was that was just mean. What you do is if you pull it up enough, then it makes the hair really messy. Um, and then it either has to be redone or they have to go and sit back on stage um, with a really messy hair, um, which was mean. But, yeah, you know, we, uh, we, we you, you, especially with 12 shows a week, sometimes those those just those little things, again, like as long as the audience don't see um, it, they just uh, they, keep, they just spur you on a little bit and they just they just keep it kind of like funny and things like that. Oh, yeah. That's great. That's great. I feel like since asking this question. A lot more have come out. So, um, Mans uh, Melanie Mansfield again. She said she hid your trousers, and what did you do? All the stories are coming out now, Marlon. I'm just reading a screenplay. I can't remember. 
<laughs> I, I must have won something. I wouldn't have gone on stage without anything. Um, I can't remember that. It was probably so um, horrific that I wiped it from my memory so that it didn't scare me any longer. But yeah, yeah, uh, they're, 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 yeah. Pretty much every show I've gone on to, things have happened where yeah, people uh, do things. Um, yeah. Again, it's it's just it's just all in jest. It's, it's just good fun. Right. Let's go back to, to serious questions now. Uh, Laura Beth Farrell Moore, that's a long name. Uh, which was your favourite Joseph? Oh, that's mean. Um, I, I, I actually, I, I can't actually say which one was my favourite. Um, every, every Joseph I've had, hands down, has been brilliant. Uh, they, they've all been fantastic. People um, like, like Darren Day, people like Ian Watkins, people like Mike Holloway, uh, people like uh, Richard Swerin, um, mm-hmm. the, the, the late Richard Swerin, who, again, was just, had a phenomenal voice. Um, he was my he was my first uh, Joseph when I went on in 2004. He was my, he was the first Joseph. And um, yeah, all of them, um, Richard Meek, uh, Craig Adams, uh, every, every Joseph I've been with, They've all had something slightly different about them, about the way they played it. They all yeah. played a part, you know, kind of obviously character-wise, very, very similar, but they all had slightly different styles in the way that they hit certain notes or the, the way that they sung certain songs. Um, and it, it, honestly, they were just, yeah, they were all fantastic, absolutely fantastic. So if, if, if I had to say one, then obviously the first one would be, would be, would be Richard because he was, he was the first one that we had. But I, I can't honestly say because they were all, they were all just brilliant. They were all brilliant guys. Yeah. I think when you've got such a you know a scope of so many different performers bringing their own style to it, then they, they leave a mark, just like the Pharaohs did as well. And you know, mm-hmm. trying to, to follow that, it's difficult, but everyone manages in their own way. Uh, Tanith Messenger, have you ever taken any costumes? Because colourful costumes. Many no. loincloths went astray. <laughs> <laughs> no, I um I believe I kept a couple of my pharaoh rings and uh, a little bit of uh, the attachment that was on my uh, necklace, my uh, neck piece. Um, I'll always, I'll always, whatever I'm allowed to take, um, I'll keep. So in Dirty Dancing, I was allowed to keep my Kellerman's T-shirt, um, which was which was really cool. Um, from nine to five, I was allowed to keep the uh, a tie that I wore, which was um, for one of the characters that I played. Um, from Starlight, I managed to keep my skates, um, but I wouldn't want to keep the costume because they were 15 kilos or, or more. Um, so, yeah, so you, you're not allowed to keep too much because a, a lot of it can can be reused. So uh, I would have loved to have kept my ferro suit, my my white ferro suit, but um, they have to use it for... Um, for, for for other for other characters that come into the show, they they will re redo the the costume or uh, resize it or anything like that for for different people, which would have been really a lot slimmer than me. Someone just commented uh, below. Uh, any chance of seeing the skates or any of the rings? Um, the the <laughs> the skates are the skates are upstairs. Um, unfortunately, uh, I um I do still I do still wear them. Uh, I do around still the house them. around the house. Yeah, you know, it's, sometimes it's you know it's quicker to get from the you know the front of the house to the back of the house. Um, you know, from the west wing to the east wing, it's easier if I put the skates. I don't understand why more people don't do it. I tell me about it. Tell me about it. Um, but I do, I do have a roll around. I do have a skate around when I can when I put them on. Um, but yeah, the rings are in probably in a in a keepsakes box somewhere, um, a safekeeping box. But yeah, I, I do like to try and keep something as a little memento from each show, just to kind of say, oh, yeah, that was, that was from that show, something a bit personal to me. Fantastic. Um, do you hoover to it with them? Um, with, with, the, with the skates? With the skates, on. yeah. Or the rings, either. <laughs> um, <laughs> it'd be the quickest hoover I think you could ever, yeah. you could ever do. I've, I've, never, I've never tried it, um, but, it, but uh, there's always a first. I don't, so I don't know why not. We've all got spare time on our hands right now, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It could be a new business venture. It could be. <laughs> um, you know, back on wheels. I like it. I want. I want ten percent. Uh, Anna Marie Cairns, uh, did you want to play Johnny in Dirty Dancing? Um, yes, I, I. I would have loved to have. I would have loved to have played Johnny. Um, I went into that show when I was when I was late thirties. So I was I was too old. I was too old for that. And um, I think they normally cast the Johnnies a little bit taller as well. I'm actually 
technically not that good a dancer either. Um, I just uh, kind of go for it. Um, yeah. Um, so they, they may have wanted something, somebody with a, with a lot more of a technical background. Um, I would have loved to have played that part. It's a, it's a great part to play. Whether I would be completely suitable for it, I don't know. Um, but it, it's an incredible show. It's a really good show that um, is very close to the film. It's really nice that they've, they've kept it very true to the film. Um, and it's a hard-working show. Anybody that goes into that show, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a hard show. Brilliant. Well, we've put you under pressure today, Marlon. You've been fantastic. Thank you for singing. Uh, thank you for asking our que- uh, answering our questions. Uh, I know everyone's excited about this massive Joseph event. Uh, what, what are you looking forward to? Even though it's online in these you know, uncertain times, what are you looking forward to doing it in your own house? Yeah, I'll, I'll probably be putting it on with family um, and, uh, and, and you know, kind of watching it all together um, and seeing it when it goes on. I'm looking forward to, to seeing what I can say is just an incredible cast. Um, it's lovely. The show is, is, is a fantastic show. You imagine that show on a bigger scale with more people um, and different people doing their, their take or their styles on the narrator or on the Joseph or on, you know, on the Pharaoh. And, and it, it just is on a, on a much bigger scale, which basically does the show justice. The show is good enough as it is now on a grander scale with more people. Um, I just think it's going to be something really nice, really special to do. Um, it almost makes me um, want to look at ne- the next anniversary that comes out and say, let's do it with even more, you know, let's, yeah. do, let's do the same thing again, but with, with even more people, with, with an even bigger cast, with, a, yeah. with a, an ensemble of 100, you know, guys and girls. Um, brilliant, yeah. And, and all those, those that will be doing it. But also I just think it's, it's nice for, for people in their situations at the moment. I know a lot of casts have done, the Re- We Will Rock You cast have done something, Mamma Mia cast have done something, but they've been um, a song. It's been a song or, you know, one number. Yeah. Um, this is a good section of the show. This is, you know, kind of pretty much half of the, the um, material of the show being done. So it's, it's, it's going to be such a big thing for people on lockdown. It will be something to watch. The arts are really, you know, kind of really looking after people that are on lockdown at yeah. the moment that are struggling. So I think it's going to be a really nice thing to keep people, um, keep, keep people busy, keep people's minds off of, of, you know, the frustration of being isolated. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Marlon, that's great. We're all excited for it and we're excited to have you on board as well. So thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for chatting to me today. Uh, I've had a, we've had a laugh, we've had a giggle, we've had a sing. Well, you've had a sing. I've listened. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Stay safe and we look forward to seeing you in Joseph. Thanks again, buddy. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Cheers, mate. And don't forget, tomorrow we'll be chatting to Jenna Lee James uh, here at two o'clock. So if you have any questions for her, uh, get them in just like you have done today on the comments or through message. We'll pick the best. We'll put them uh, to Jenna tomorrow at two o'clock. Join me here. Uh, Adam Smith asking those questions as we get closer and closer to seeing Joseph and the amazing all-star cast concert highlights uh, from the Technicolor musical. It's been a pleasure being here today. Stay safe, stay at home, stay well, and I'll see you tomorrow, two o'clock. Ta-ra.